Welcome everybody, this is Commander Ramsey uh, coming to you uh, with another video. Uh, this one, I just acquired the uh, old Tier 7 Duke of York. It was highly recommended by Sea Lord Mountain Batten on his YouTube page. So I went back to Tier 7, thought I'd have some fun, maybe, and acquired the Duke of York uh, with coal. She came highly recommended. Uh, the commander skills and ship build will be at the end of the video as usual. Uh, what's really unique about this battleship, as you can see on the bottom of your screen there at 6 o'clock, is she has hydro. A tier 7 battleship with hydro. How sweet it is. And uh, we'll get into more of that at the end of the video. Uh, the Duke of York, uh, being a strong battleship of uh, the British line, uh, has an unusual gun arrangement on her front two turrets. She has one turret with four barrels and the second turret with two barrels. So you've got a total of six barrels up front, uh, which is uh, about equivalent to a typical American battleship with uh, two turrets of three barrels each. Now the rear turret uh, has four barrels, so uh, giving a total of ten barrels overall. Uh, her barrels are still in the mid 350 centimeter range, I think that's 14 inch. So uh, reasonable for tier 7. Uh, in this particular battle I got lucky and uh, was top tier. This is my very first game in the Duke, I will not lie to you with that. So as my usual custom, I tend to start off with HE shells, which actually is not a bad thing for a British battleship because they are known, uh, inf infamously known, to easily start fires, uh, which works uh, at an advantage uh, when you first start the game in a battleship because you're firing at distance. And uh, instead of getting a lot of those pesky uh, shell ricochets using AP shells at distance, I usually start off with HE shells until I get a little closer and realize I've got uh, perhaps maybe a shot using AP. I hate wasted volleys. It's a waste of time and loss of uh, points for your team and for yourself. Uh, the secondaries on most British battleships are uh, nothing much to write home about, so uh, they're okay for close in. Uh, engagements, but anything other than that, I would not uh, build your ship uh, for any secondary use. This map is peppered with mountains, uh, which, uh, as you know, how I feel about that. And right away, I'm uh, getting pinged by a pesky submarine. Unbelievable. What am I just at almost not even three minutes into the game being pinged? So I start to make a uh, plan to get out of there. I activate my hydro. And normally when you hit the uh, repair party here, it's supposed to throw off uh, the torpedo's homing function. I'm turning as sharp as I can here. I hit my repair party and hopes that uh, I sound my horn to the oncoming friendly cruiser to let you know the torpedoes are coming. Uh, I guess fortunately for him, I eat every one of them. Large damage. I activate my uh, rip, my uh, heal. He activates his hydro, so I guess the message got through to him. I wasn't getting on to him. I was simply trying to alert him. Hey, we're in trouble. We got torpedoes on the way. So uh, anyway, I ate all the damage. Uh, for some reason, I guess I couldn't turn sharp enough, or the uh, homing mechanism just. Uh, overrode my repair party. Nonetheless, uh, I'm going to move around this corner of the mountain to get away from the sub and let the uh, uh, cruiser Emerald try to take care of him. Uh, I've got other friendlies moving in for reinforcements, so our flank here looks strong. I decided to take the right side of the island see the uh, tier 5 uh, French 
battleship. He's over the side of the island. Trying to get in a shot on him. I did manage uh, one penetration there for about 4,500 damage. And I'm starting to get peppered by a, another enemy ship. Smoke. That number of uh, shells most likely at this tier is close. Then I notice uh, got another battleship off in the horizon to my northeast. And it's the tier 5 resort, so I launch a few AP shells at him. Notice I switched to AP. And I did get a three, uh, four good penetrations on him for almost 14k in damage. So that turned out to be the right maneuver. But I feel I'm getting uh, ganged up on, so I decided to back up here a little bit. Maybe try to get outside the uh, gun range of that cruiser. You notice he's launching uh, AP only at me, so that tells me it must be one of the British uh, light cruisers. Let's see here on my list. Uh, the Emerald, probably the Emerald. And there it is, yes, the Emerald. You, you can, if you know your ships well enough, you can, you can start to take a guess who they are before they actually get identified. Sometimes that's helpful, uh, particularly when using the uh, Wargaming Mod Station. You can look up there to see if they have torpedoes, uh, and you can also see their gun range. Got another ship off in the distance peppering me, probably, a, uh, probably another pipe cruiser. And the New York just went down on their side. So or two. Uh, actually, they got three ships down. I lost a uh, lost a third there. So, and that Emerald is uh, he's backing in and out of the island to try to let me have it with his AP shells. Doing a pretty good job, actually. I'm going to back up here to kind of regroup my thoughts here and take a look at my mini map. I always try to use my mini map during the battle, and I would highly encourage that. Looks like uh, the Emerald did get the uh, submarine earlier there in the battle, so that was good. He did a good job. And uh, I finally got a shot there on the Emerald. He poked out one too many times, and I nailed him with a Citadel. Uh, he got that customary uh, deafening silence in the speaker or his headphones, which we all need. So at this point, I had an open shot on the uh, American battleship Colorado. I'm starting to try to pepper him with a few main battery shells. So far, the game's uh, fairly tight. Haven't had to use uh, but once. I, yeah, I did use my airstrike depth charge. I don't, uh, I didn't get any hits on it. One thing you've got to remember when using airstrike depth charge, remember you can get the uh, spotter's view if you hit the uh, correct buttons on your laptop uh, or your gaming computer keyboard. You can get a better view of where that uh, ping was uh, originated from. Sometimes I forget that in the heat of battle. You gotta hit another button to get the uh, to get the uh, spotter view, which is actually makes your depth depth charge uh, airstrike a little more accurate as far as where those depth charges are dropped. Here the Colorado's trying to sneak around the edge. I'm sorry, that's the yeah, that's the Colorado. Colorado. And I notice there's the Emerald. Uh, he's making a run for it. I wish I had not launched those shells at the Colorado. I probably could have nailed the Emerald. But he's going to disappear behind the mountainside. But that's fine. He's he's committing suicide going into a whole uh, division of my teammates up there in D2. Uh, notice what's interesting here. Our submarine, uh, U-69, uh, the horse, he's... Uh, He's leading uh, that division into battle, just like a destroyer. So, uh, 
all you sub and destroyer players, uh, take a note how he's uh, acting as the lead. He in fact, even mentions it in the text box, uh, if he hadn't already, which I think is a great example. Uh, you can still provide a great uh, complement to your division or your fleet by spotting, even in a submarine, as, as if you were in a DD. All right, the Colorado is going to poke out behind the mountain or the island here, and I'm going to try to let loose on some uh, AP shells in his direction. Uh, over penetration, non penetration, and ricochet. You just got to love those AP shells. Colorado's a tough old uh, battleship of the dreadnought era, and uh, she can bounce uh, probably any. Most tier 7 shells, maybe not the Synop, which uh, happens to be closing in on our cap zone and our CV. So our CV at zero is in real trouble. So I try to head that way. Try to send a few shells toward his direction to let him know that, hey, you're not getting, getting in there scot-free. And then uh, I had kind of forgotten about the Colorado. He had beached himself over here on the, uh, the island. Uh, that's never good for a slow-moving battleship. You basically make yourself a target. I aim for a superstructure. Get a little bit of damage there. 4 or 5k. And I notice uh, my friendlies, uh, here's my buddy in the U-69 sending uh, some torpedoes in to finish off the Colorado. And uh, he's toast. So good job. So now I can concentrate uh, all of my uh, efforts on the Synop to try to save our carrier as he makes a run for it. I zoom in on the Synop and notice that uh, he's really not paying much attention to me. He's got his guns still focused on the CV. It always amazes me in uh, World of Warships how um, Players will be over asphyxiated with uh, going after the CV, the enemy CV. Oftentimes, uh, not paying attention to the other ships around them. Speaking of not paying attention, off to the left, I just get peppered with some HE shells. And I thought, oh, who's that big be? It has to be their cruiser, uh, Indianapolis. He's at full health. Yeah, I get some really good damage there on the Synop there. The Synop's weak on the side, so even a, even an angle, you can do some good damage on it. And I did. thought I might finish her off there, but I didn't get the shells high enough. They dove into the water. So I'm going to try to finish off the Synop here before she disappears behind the island. My front turrets. Yes. Take out the Synop. Sound the horn of victory and try to move up here, take a position up to see if the Indianapolis is also going to try to get in on our cap zone. Meanwhile, uh, my friendlies are trying to cap, but you know how that is uh, when you've got an enemy CV close by, it's next to impossible because the CV just has to pepper you. And lo and behold, there's the Indianapolis popping behind the island. Perfect timing. I launched uh, some of my uh, AP shells at him. Ooh, yeah. Got Confederate and an, another Citadel. So uh, the Indianapolis is now uh, limping. And uh, see if I can finish her off with another volley of AP shells. And I do. And sounding the horn of victory. At this point, I'm thinking, okay, the game's over. But uh, all of a sudden... Uh, Big Stud Horse is calling for reinforcements as the enemy CV is trying to make a getaway. And so uh, I'm stuck on a sandbar because I wasn't paying attention in the heat of battle. So I'm thinking, okay, I can't get out of this. But then again, I look back and say, oh, he's in my gun range. Still in my gun range. The uh, Duke of York's gun range is uh, it's moderately okay. It's not poor, but it's not anything to write home about. But the uh, CV is in my gun range, so I'll launch a, a volley of my rear turret. 
see if I can uh, try to take her out. Launch the uh, volley of the front shells. Got a little damage. That one looks a little more promising. Looks real promising. Only one penetration, though. And here I'm going to shoot using my mini map, locking in on the target to try to get one last hope. And a little more damage there, two more penetrations. But I could not take down the CV. Their uh, enemy uh, uh, submarine finally goes down. And the game is over. But a uh, very fun game. Uh, sea Lord Mountbatten was, was correct. Uh, the Duke of York is actually quite uh, fun to play. And I think having that hydro enables you to uh, navigate for the most part uh, around uh, torpedoes, but uh, I wasn't so lucky that time. I took uh, five or six of them. And fortunately, the British heel did manage to rack up 117,000 points in a tier 7 in my first battle. Two destroyed, three citadels. Uh, a good game. And uh, But the uh, big stud horse actually edged me out on XP, barely, but uh, gave him a compliment. He did great, leading his division into battle. I took down 12 enemy planes. Uh, Gatto took out 20 enemy planes. He did great. Our, our Sirov CV, he did really well. Almost getting himself blown up by the uh, Sinop. Fortunately, I was there to help protect my teammate. Here's the details. Don't forget the uh, commander and ship build uh, is coming up here in just a minute. Here's the Indianapolis uh, results. Five uh, AP shell hits. The Sinop, eight AP shell hits. Uh, the New York, six. Not bad. Uh, pretty good accuracy uh, for these uh, tier seven guns. Uh, at good mid-range distance, so I was satisfied with that. There's your uh, enemy CV results. The Emerald. Got a lot of good scatter damage. That's probably why I got Confederate over numerous ships. Only one fire. I, I didn't really uh, use HE shells a lot during that game. I switched over to AP fairly quickly as I found myself in, in mid-range battle with some good opportunities. Uh, and the credits uh, racked up almost 28,000 Commander XP, which is very valuable for building your uh, Commander skills. Um, credits, not too bad, almost a half a million. Notice the shape of it looks a lot like the uh, Tier 10 Thunder, so the shape of uh, that British battle design. Here's my build, Auxiliary Armaments Mod 1. Um, I went ahead and put the Hydro Acoustic Search Booster on there, 20%. I figured that would be more useful. I kept this for the uh, shell accuracy and, of course, uh, maintaining damage. Mod Station 2. But notice here on the Hydro uh, Search Mod 1, uh, that gets me out to 132 seconds in combination with the uh, Signal Sierra Bravo, which also helps it out over 130 seconds. Uh, pretty typical battleship signal build for me. I didn't extend the secondaries because they're so short it'd be just a waste of a signal flag. I used the uh, blue bonus uh, there for the commander XP. That really helps building up your skills. I moved over Jack Dunkirk uh, to try him out um, primarily because his uh, skill of greasing the gears here but those turrets you notice are still slow, but I can't imagine without that they would be extremely slow. AA Defense and ASW Expert, I chose that. Uh, pretty much the Adrenaline Rush. Now this one I chose, Furious, that came recommended for the ship uh, to help uh, battery reload time and dispersion. And I think it did, except for that sub. Emergency Repair Expert uh, and also Concealment. 
Gets your concealment though down to 12.7, which is excellent for a battleship of this size. So I was quite pleased with that. <coughs> I would highly recommend uh, if you've got one of the Dunkirk brothers <coughs> to use one of those guys on this ship because of the greased gears for the main battery turrets. They are your lifeblood on this ship. Um, you can see the other capabilities that the Dunkirk brothers have. They're really uh, excellent cruisers. And that's where I use them. I use them on the, the Minotaur, uh, the Belfast, uh, the Fiji, and pretty soon I'm going to be getting the Plymouth uh, steel ship here in June if Bond goes active. But the Dunkirk brothers are really nilch for submarines and aircraft carriers, primarily for some help on battleships, uh, upper tier battleships. Uh, you can look at the other commanders. Uh, Andrew Cunningham really doesn't do anything on Grease the Gears, so that's why I did not choose him. Uh, he stays pretty much. I use him on uh, destroyers and aircraft carriers. 